afternoon, everyone. This is really refreshing for me because I'm usually in a classroom full of germ bags on legs. So this is really nice to have everybody here. But just to start off this afternoon, um, I'd like you to get involved. So if you've got an iPhone or um, a camera on your phone, I'm going to pop up a QR code. Um, and if you want to join in with this quick quiz, then please do. It would be fantastic for you to do that. So I'm going to um, put the QR code up now. And it should take you to a Kahoot. If you haven't done a Kahoot before, um, all you need to do is tap on it. It will ask you for your name. Put in your favourite movie star or, you know, your idol or something like that. And um, it will come up onto the screen and you can see people coming in. So when we've got a couple of people coming in, we'll start our Kahoot. I'm glad Will Smith's in the room. <laughs> I hope I'm not going to offend you. And a Mandalorian, wow, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So, 50 people. Boris, last to join. Well, <laughs> we're going, getting there. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so this is just a little bit of fun to get things started. Um, and just going to give you a few more seconds. If you are in. Fantastic. Okay, so let's get started. So how this works is um, a question will come up on the screen and it will give you um, either two or four options and they're coloured. So there is the first question. What's the best thing about school? You've got a countdown to answer. You just tap on the colour that you want to say. Brilliant. Obviously, the staff. So, a joint there between friends and the computer room. Staff didn't really appear to be in that part. Okay, let's see what's going to come next. So, let's see who's winning. <laughs> Bugs Bunny at the top at the moment. So, this is true or false? Did you feel supported as an individual when you were at school? people's answers coming in. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> half and half. Okay, Super Mario's taken over. Again, one in four. When did you feel successful? You're a very good class, you're ever so quiet. This normally is a complete riot in the classroom. Absolutely. Challenge is so important, isn't it? Oh, it's still at the top. I should have said there are no prizes for this. <laughs> and the last question, what do you think education should look like today? Absolutely. Um, so I'm glad you chose that one because my, my company is called Digital Pencil Case <clears throat> and that's my kind of motto because I feel that um, having technology within school is an absolute must um, and I just want to take you on a small journey today about how where we've come from or where I've come from and where we are now. So let's just finish this off by having a podium. <laughs> well, who knew? <laughs> Excellent. Finally there. A very dull name. <laughs> well done. Round of applause. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, um, 
As I said, I'm, as you can imagine, I'm a teacher um, and have been teaching for um, the best part of 30 years now. Um, and it wasn't until 2010 when I was introduced to um, iPad. And at that time, it was just a complete revelation. Um, and you can imagine in schools at that time, uh, people really weren't able to utilize mobile technology. Um, they had computer rooms that were horseshoe shaped usually and you faced a wall for an hour a week. That was about the um, limit of how you were connected. Um, but it's, for me, the thing that changed my outlook on teaching. So from that day, I went back to the school that I was at that time working in, um, which happens just to be over the hill um, at Hurst Pier Point. And just said, we have got to change how we work with our students. Um, and so from that point, we went into a one-to-one, -one, which was one of the first ones in the country, in fact. But I think you have to be curious about things. You have to continually update, and you have to continually be looking for possibilities if you are going to move on. Now, sounds great, doesn't it? If you have a vision, to then convince other people that they need to come on that journey with you. To be honest with you, I spent the first eight years still trying to convince people to do that because they didn't see necessarily the way that I was wanting to work with the students. And it's actually not until this little bug arrived that people stop what they were doing, because they had to, and they had to find a new alternative. And the appetite for technology and for that connectedness overnight <laughs> was quite incredible. It's what actually education needed, a shake-up. So for me, I want to talk today about how we need to learn from the lessons that have happened in the last 18 months. Now, I'm also an Apple professional learning specialist, which means in the world of Apple that I work with the education team across UK and EMEA. So I work with leaders and schools to uh, get the kit into the hand, onto the hands of the students, but also to train the teachers. Initially, that would have been my barrier to train the teachers because they will be, oh, I haven't got time for this. I've only got one in set day, Friday, just before Easter when I'm exhausted, so I'm not going to really take on board what you're saying, Vicky. What happened in lockdown was that the teachers had to do it. So not just next week or term, summer term, Two days time they were going to go live with this kit so they were clamoring for information to help them to work with zoom to work with teams to work with whatever it was they were going to connect with their students on and you know for the first time ever professional development was timely it happened when it was relevant to those staff and it was targeted. And so that, for me, was a huge um, celebratory time. I know it was COVID, but for me, it was really important that I started to see the technology being used by the students and the staff in equitable ways. So I am a bit of a disruptor, you see. I, I, I don't mind challenging people, and I don't mind challenging systems. I will ask the questions that make people think. And that's important when you think about working in education. Because it's traditional, isn't it? The model of education, you sit in a room, you're nice and quiet. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, but you go through a system, you learn things, you tick things off on the journey, and then you get a little piece of paper at the end to say, well done. And that little piece of paper is handwritten. 
And you've had to remember things and you've had to handwrite to get that piece of paper to say that you're successful. But like we've just seen on our Kahoot, we're individuals. And until we see students as individuals and give them the tools to prove that they can learn in the way that they feel best, we're not going to change how that end goal is seen. So I'm working um, with Apple at the moment to get to the government to say we need to change the way that um, exams are done and how students are recognised as being successful. So let's have a look at what I do. So basically that's a list of kind of things that I take to the table when I'm looking for uh, leaders and talking to leaders. I'm asking them about how the pedagogy in the school reflects their vision. And thank you for those people that responded to the, the poll on the app. That's really great. I saw that uh, you also agree that vision is one of those most important things. But for me, it's important to know that the vision isn't just about one person. It's a shared vision. It's a culture around the setting, the school, the multi-academy trust, whatever we're dealing with. But second to that, if you don't know what you want to achieve and where you want to go, you have then to know how to do it. And the strategy is key because things come along, like a world pandemic <laughs> that can knock you off, off um, schedule. So if you've got a strategy that's really well built, then that's not going to happen. The other um, aspects here are also really important and are, like you, if you answered the poll in the app, also reflected back to me, they're kind of almost equally important. So building a team, as well as change management, as well as that idea of sustainability. So, testing. When obviously COVID hit, everybody was very happy to keep on testing and to see when things had changed. And for me, I had to be almost the conduit for schools to um, get them to measure their success. Now, for some people um, within schools at this time, measurement of success was getting to the end of the day without, <laughs> well, I was gonna say without killing anyone, but you know what I mean? To get to the end of the day, as exhausted as they were, having to deal with online uh, teaching as well as perhaps dealing with their own children within the, in the, their house. All of that came through and then they were asked to continually test. Now the idea about testing is to see if there's a change. And change is something that people don't always like to see. And I think it was important for uh, COVID lockdown kind of scenario that we were in, people saw rapid change. They saw students in a way that they'd never seen them before. They enabled, the technology I should say, enabled the students to kind of put their head above the parapet. They didn't have to hold their hand up and be pointed at they could all share in the experience together. They could all access voice notes, video camera, drawing, markup, all of those things, the screen record. They could access a voice within them that allowed them to tell their teacher that they understood. And you know, the best thing about that was the teachers embraced it. They encouraged it. They, innate, they gave permission to their students. And that's the best thing that happened whilst we were in lockdown. Or well, they've gone backwards. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go back to 
that first list, you'll, you'll recognize the, the right-hand side. But I was thinking, you know, in terms of virus speak, actually we had the best kind of environment to spread that virus of how technology could connect with students and how that technology enabled students to be in charge of their learning. So my job, like I said, as an APL, I felt was kind of done, really. Tick that box, Vicky, well done. You've, you've managed to get the, the uh, teachers on board. The students are learning beautifully. Everybody's happy. But unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. So what I want to do now is I just want to, because um, within the world of education, if you heard the word SAMA, model, you may go, oh yeah, I know what that is, Vicky. So I just want to give you a little bit of background to uh, what I'm going to talk about next using this common sense uh, video. Every day, teachers are designing activities to target higher order thinking skills in order to engage students in rich learning experiences. But integrating technology adds a whole new layer to teaching and learning. How can technology transform your learning design? Dr. Ruben Puentadura developed the SAMR model as a way for teachers to evaluate how they are incorporating technology into their instructional practice. You can use SAMR to reflect upon how you are integrating technology into your classroom. Is it an act of substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition? Dr. Puentadura likens his model to moving up a ladder. The model includes a dotted line that represents the threshold where you shift from using technology to enhance learning to using it to transform learning. Transforming learning promotes higher order thinking skills, such as analyzing, evaluating, and creating which are essential to Common Core State Standards and 21st Century Learning. Okay, so that kind of gave you a bit of a background. From enhancing to transforming, and that's actually the journey that I want the teachers to continue to go on. So instead of just using their iPads or Macs just to do a bit of research, they're actually now making an iMovie, perhaps, making a podcast, etc. Okay, which is then doing something that they wouldn't possibly been able to do before. 21st century learning is a motto, kind of, um, it's banded around in school, but I don't think it's about 21st century learning, it's about now. We have to think that the students' education is now and we want to provide them with um, the skills that they need. So, what lessons have been learned and what lessons have I learned as an Apple Professional Learning Specialist to take forward into schools? Firstly, not to overgeneralise. It's real and also not to underestimate because it's important that the students are leading that innovation in a way that they're demanding that way of learning. I'm going to tell you a little story. I have a friend who has, uh, who has four children. Those four children in the normal school, when school was nine to, um, nine to three, come home, do your homework, go back the next day, two of which would absolutely flourish. They love school, two of which hated it. They, they went because they have to but they didn't really enjoy it. It didn't connect with them. During lockdown, on their online lessons, they had space and time and a different appetite for learning, three of which loved it. So when they went back to school, if you want to put it in percentage terms, 75% of her children, <laughs> three quarters of her children, we're back to that, this doesn't resonate with me. I'm now trapped into a different way of learning because the school didn't carry on the same kind of techniques. So that's, that was my challenge. How could I work with the schools to get them to see the successes? 
and to integrate them into the daily life of those children. Because schools, I think, had both the opportunity and the mandate to keep on transforming the way that uh, school was working and the lessons were being delivered. The upskilling that had hap happened for the staff was just as important as the upskilling for the students. So we need to think about how we can continue the path of innovation. Now, there are, there's a, a worldwide community of Apple professional learning specialists, um, and I think to make sure we think about the connectedness of this, that was my secret weapon. Because as an APLS working within a school, these different modules or ways that I could support them continue to be as relevant, if not more relevant now, post-lockdown, than they were previously. Because the teachers see the need and have the skills. But it's so important that we understand the vision of that school, that it isn't just about exam results, it's how the students get there. Because a lot of evidence is pointing to the fact that if you allow students to personalize their learning using technology and digital tools, They'll get to those markers, but they'll almost enhance the way that they got there and they'll exceed expectations. This resonates with me particularly because the innovation cycle that we talk about doesn't end. We may have got to a point where we're transforming learning and some schools have got there, but now they need to introduce it again within the real curriculum and to be able to continue to do that. And that's where I come in and that's where the technology comes in because it's forever advancing and reflecting the needs of those students. So whether they go into AR, VR, or just work with the, the technology in a collaborative um, space, that's really important. So I've got a, a few little um, resources that I use with them. You may be familiar with it. If you're not fam familiar with these, jump onto into books and download the leadership series of multi-touch books. There's some fantastic widgets within there that I use to steer conversations and to mark out measures towards a journey um, of success within a, a vision. I don't know how many of you have been to the Apple Teacher website or resource center. If you haven't, jump into that as well because it's got so many resources from uh, ADEs or Apple Distinguished Educators and Apple Professional Learners from worldwide who have collated um, a set of resources and inspiration for teachers. Remember when I asked about sustainability within the app of your uh, training that you have? Lots of you say you are self-motivated and go online to find that development for yourself. And now teachers are much more happy to do that. And this is somewhere where they can land and this is somewhere where they can get the resources that they require. It's free, that helps, um, and it's always expanding. So Apple Teacher itself is a qualification that some schools now have and require their teachers to have if they're using um, Apple technology. It goes further because, as you may well know, um, Apple developed curricula, and this is the creative curriculum. So the, the blue books are the student books, separated into skills though, not into this is how to use. It's a very creative, open way of learning. Just from, the, you can see up on here, just from the very smallest learners. If you're not familiar with them, they're fantastic just to go and have a, 
uh, um, some ideas about how to use each of those, and they're available on books. So, that's my, if you need to contact me, that's my email address. <laughs> but in terms of lessons learned from COVID, that's catching, that idea of a virus catching, being in an environment when you, where you get infected by it. I think that's what's happened in schools recently. Technology has infected the teachers. And because we've got the teachers uh, able to see the outcomes, the students are responding and asking them and working with them in a more collaborative, con connected way to increase their um, ability to access education. So what I'd like to do is say thank you so much for um, allowing me to talk to you on a, a subject that you probably thought, that's never going to happen this afternoon, because I sat at the back there listening to the gentleman beforehand thinking, Whew, I'm not sure what's happening here. But thank you so much for sparing the time to listen to me this afternoon. Really important.